keynote speaker for the launch of a situation report and action plan on media and information literacy and disinformation in the Caribbean, Julius Gittens, noted that media in the Caribbean, including Grenada, are facing a battle for relevance. More and more of our audiences seem to be uh, declaring with increasingly strident tones amounting to outright boasting that they don't watch the television, they listen to the radio. Gittens highlighting the need to reinforce the values of public service media in the strengthening of democracy and their contributions, impressed its importance to cultural entrepreneurship and the creative industry. To put it plainly, public service media trade in facts, seek the truth, try to explain and understand rather than merely expose and exploit. And those values and this work have become more relevant, not less relevant, more valuable, not less valuable, more necessary now than ever before in this era of information wars and rumors of information wars. The independent media and communication specialist believes that Caribbean media have been flying blind since the advent of the smartphone. And yet it is also a fact, is it not, that radio and television appear to be entering a new golden age through some of that same technology. The platform by which increasing numbers of people receive the signals may be changing, but the demand for content appears unabated. And yet, as recently as three weeks ago, a Caribbean leader declared the death of broadcasting and the birth of narrowcasting. The veteran broadcaster says Caribbean media's relevance is under threat as politicians discovered a digital tool for the preservation and gaining of political power. Despite the original intentions to model national radio and television stations on the BBC, Caribbean leaders have moved swiftly to co-op broadcasting for far more narrow sectional interests. Instead of using the airwaves to educate, inform, and entertain, as public broadcasting settled to do for the last 100 years, in the Caribbean, it has been forced to proselytize, propaganda, and anesthetize. It is perhaps because so many of our people have become inured to this corrupting of public service media, both without and within, that many are reportedly moving away from these traditional sources of news and current affairs. The birth of social media, Giddens adds, has led to masses of information being poured into the vacuum of trust, with Caribbean media finding it difficult to follow. But the population's appetite for credible news, ethically generated, outstrips the capacity of our media to supply. Unable to successfully monetize these new platforms, Amid declining advertising revenue, because unlike elsewhere in the Commonwealth, Caribbean public broadcasters have rarely received discrete public funding, certainly not without political strings attached. And despite the widespread public perception that our public service media are fed a steady diet of taxpayers' dollars, actually our newsrooms, both in the public and the private sector, have been decimated as managers see the journalist and the program maker as the most expendable resource. He told his colleagues that in this current era, a rise in a lack of trust in news media and a rise in untrustworthy media have been witnessed. Citing examples, the independent media and communication specialists impressed that while news media is being regulated by law, ethics and morality in restricting the publication of graphic details or giving intimate details of a case, Social media does not have such restrictions. What then should be the response of our media policymakers, both within and without the media industry? In my view, the antidote to this poison is not only obvious, but unavoidable. The only way, as far as I can see, out of this morass of the incredulous and the incredible is that we must first begin with the source. And in this case, I refer to the end user, our audiences. There needs to be an effort undertaken as never before to educate our audiences in media literacy. The education effort must not only be formal, but informal. Formally, where our education systems embark on media literacy programs from primary through to post-secondary, we in the uh, media informally need to do what we have seldom if ever done, teach our people how to consume media and ultimately to contribute more meaningfully, perhaps even democratically, to media production. I am Jara Joseph.
Fajibia News.